Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out at two. I am your solo host, back from the abyss, ready for business, Mr. Joey, you know the rest. And I am here with my latest raw rebuttal. As we truck right on into Cleveland, to the house that the Miz built, and we're going to the dog pound, and we're going to SummerSlam. And I gotta say, a week off gives the mind some clarity. Um, but this watch was a little, little interesting, I have to say. So we're gonna break this down into what I like to call the good, the bad, and the mid. And let's just see what we had. So let's start with the good. The good, well, the opening. The opening was we were treated to Seth Rollins' music and everyone, oh, 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 you know, all that jazz. And um, he was in the most referee of referee attires I've ever seen. Um, he couldn't be more stripes if he had if he was a zebra, which he had zebra boots. So take that for what you will. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, Seth coming out only the way Seth could to introduce himself and remind everyone that the reason that he's going to be a referee at SummerSlam is because between Punk and Drew, no referee wants to go near this match. They've all been abused and used and yeah. So I can't blame them. Um, but yeah, as Seth starts his you know explanation, all of a sudden, tsh, 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 here comes Punk, right trucking on down to the ring and he's not having it. He's not happy. Phil's in a little salty mood. He doesn't like the idea that Seth's a, um, a referee for this. So he decides, you know, all of a sudden McIntyre's music hits. Sword goes down. Scottish bagpipes. He comes a-blazing to the ring. And Punk basically says, yeah, you know what? I'm out, Ski. I'm out, E5000. Um, and he runs over to the commentary booth, which is where a place that he is very welcome because... Let's face it, CM Punk is so good on the stick. He's also good on the cans. So, um, yeah. But Seth says, okay, I know you hate him. He hates you. I hate you. We all hate each other. There's a big, huge hate fest going on here. Um, but you think you're in control of things, Phil, and you're not. So get your ass in the ring because if you don't, this match isn't happening. So Seth lays down the law. And, and I got to say, it's like a cool update reminiscent of Jesse Ventura. And where were they tonight? But Minnesota. And the only reason I said Minnesota is if you remember the build-up to SummerSlam 1999, which featured The Game, Triple H, and featured Mankind McFoley, as well as Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, in an yeah, unbelievable epic. And you had Jesse the uh, Body Ventura, who was the governor of Minnesota at that time, laying down the law. And I thought it was really cool that they did it a callback for the same type of match where Seth is now in Jesse's shoes. And speaking of Jesse, we'll get to that because Jesse actually showed up backstage for Raw. And he embraced Triple H. And hell has definitely frozen th over in the WWE landscape. You got Punk coming back. You got Jesse Ventura. I mean, you got Cody Rhodes. The world is just topsy-turvy, and I love every second of it. It's so good. But yeah, so Seth's laying down the law and basically says, hey, you know what? Here is the rules, and I thought it was really cool. Where Jesse, if you remember, was like, the pinfall must take place in the middle of the ring, meaning, you know, no chairs, no bullshit. It's got to be wrestling. The best wrestler will win. They flipped the script where Seth was like, okay, there's going to be no count outs. I might count to one. I might count to 10. I might count to 20. I might count to a million. So, and as far as disqualifications go, he's like, eh, referee's discretion. So basically he instigates that he is insinuates, excuse me, insinuates that he's going to let them fight. Let them fight. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, I love it. I dug the callback. I like how Drew tried to get on Seth's side by saying, I'm an arse. You're an arse, Seth. But this guy's a cancer. He's the worst. You know, if anyone should want to take him out, you know, you and I, we've always had a professional relationship. We've always been friends. We've also been, you know, competitive colleagues. 
we just want to be the best. This guy sucks. And then, you know, you got Punk like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not my fault that, you know, the only time you're relevant, Drew, is when I made you relevant. And he says, you know, it enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed the last six months of your career because after SummerSlam, it's over. The relevancy stops because you no longer have to be able to be sucked into the CM Punk orbit where you breathe the rarefied air that I provide to you. Paraphrasing, of course, but it was something as eloquent as that. And then he says, you know, I can't even, Drew says, I can't even go to the supermarket without people chanting your name at me. And Drew Punk says, you know, for all that you've accomplished in this business, for all that you've done, what do you really got? He's like, I've been gone for 10 years. And for 10 years, people were chanting my name. That is a fact. You can watch a lot of Raws, a lot of pay-per-views after 2014 Royal Rumble, and you will hear CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, lots of times. So those are facts, people. Facts don't like your feelings. But then Drew goes, what do I got? And then he holds up the bracelet that Punk treasures so much. And basically wants to get Punk to fight him. Because if Punk throws a punch, the match is off. If Drew throws a punch, the match is off. If any of them touch Seth, the match is off. This is one of those, just like Jesse the Body Ventura things, you guys are going to stay clear of each other. We're going to have this happen. Business will transpire in the ring. And I couldn't be more for it because I am Mr. Joey Business, and that is what's best for business. I cannot wait. I am souped up. I will be reunited with my colleague and cohort, Mr. Donnie Wonderful, a.k.a. Big Time Donnie, on Saturday. And it will feel so good to be in the same room again, to feel that energy as we watch, no doubt, an epic contest. So that's part of the good. There was more good on this show. Um, after a little bit of a lackluster, curious head scratcher of the Wyatt Six over the past couple of weeks, they brought it back full fold. Um, you know, you had you had the uh, the new Alpha Academy, which was the uh, Gable and the the, um, the Creed brothers taking on the old Alpha Academy. You know, the remnants, Otis and um, Tazawa, and it was it was okay. I, I'm a little over this whole feud at this point. I feel like it's just a third wheel. But it was the vehicle to get us to the point that just happened right after this. So, you know, they're trying to have their way with the um, the remnants of Alpha Academy, Beta Academy, if you want to call them. And then Maxine comes in and she takes off her shoes. And like, man, when she's going barefoot, you know that the shit's going to go down. This this chick was not afraid to throw. And it was cute. But it was also like, okay, this girl means business. Here we go. And all of a sudden, <laughs> The lights go down, the the levels of lights that, and I just love that. And then you get the, the familiar chime, you get the you know the 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 music, the you know just that one chord over and over. The blue lights, the fireflies are a bugging. They are lit up the sky inside the arena, and then you get three of the Wyatt Six. You get Gacy. You get Dexter Loomis, and you get Eric Rowan. So you get Ramblin' Rabbit, Mercy the Buzzard, and I think, oh, I forget the pig's name, and I apologize, Huskis maybe? But anyways, they come to the ring, and they confront the, the, um, the new Alpha Academy. They confront Master Gable and his, his pupils, and all of a sudden... They take their masks off, which was a really strange move to me because I'm sitting there going, there's so much more menace to them when they have the masks and they become these ghostly figures that just stalk the ring and don't say a word. They don't say anything, but then you got Abby the Witch, a.k.a. Nikki Cross, cross-bodying. Let's see what I did there. Word Wordplay. And the jumping off and taking on um, the Creed Brothers, knocking them down with a like, cross-body. And... Once Nikki's body's crossed, she gets back up and she rolls out of she rolls into the corner and she kind of just does this like slump and then the lantern comes up. And then as that's happening, and I have a theory by the way, sidebar, that the Wyatt's sixth member is the lantern itself. It is the 
representation of the spirit of Bray Wyatt. I think I will be proven right on this. I don't I don't think they just named it six like you're sick. I think there is six members. I just think the lantern is the sixth representative. So then all of a sudden Rowan and um, Gacy and Dexter Loomis get in there and they do their thing and they look good. They're moving crisp. They're moving. They're also doing a little bit of stuff in the ring that's out of Bray's playbook, right? Rowan does that really incredibly uh, high velocity, uh, almost like a cross body, but it's just like it's just like a long takedown across. So it's a cross body, just like very like low low end cross body. It's not off the ropes, but it, I mean it's off the ropes, but it's not off the turnbuckle, off the top. And it looked good, and I'm all for it because now. There was an inevitably the part where you're going to have to get to the point where these guys do compete in a ring. I think if you give less is more and they stop talking or don't talk, that will be better. Um, I like it. And then you got, of course, Chad Gable trying to get out of Dodge, get out of town, you know, get out of anywhere. And he's bolting. And what happens? You get the forbidden door. You get that, you know, the eerily spooky blue door. Um behind him and of course you have uncle howdy this is how it should be done ladies and gentlemen correct me if i'm wrong but this is how you present the wyatt six they're just macabre ghostly apparitions that pop up they don't get in the ring and give long expositions on the microphone they don't give you too many videotapes uh, that is something we'll get to I am against the VHS tapes now. After they do and finish off their round of VHS tapes, which there should only be one more, it should be Joe Gacy, because this week they did Dexter Loomis. I'm done with that. Please, no more VHS tapes. You, you, we know who you are. We know what's going on. Let's move forward. But keep the masks on. If Bo is going to compete in the ring, I want him competing as Uncle Howdy with the mask. Because I want them to signify, you know, all the rest of us, our old lives, we're gone. We're dead. This is who we are now. And we're way more menacing and way more dangerous than you could have thought. So that falls under the good. Because last, it was two weeks ago, I did not like Bo Dallas being in, or it was, yeah, it was two weeks ago. I did not like Bo Dallas being in the ring exposed as Bo Dallas. I thought that weakened the Wyatt Six angle. I thought it was just a little hokey, and I'm glad to see them bring it back to form. I would like them to put the Alpha Academy and Creed to rest and move on to bigger and greener pastures that they can decay. I, I think that would be great. So um, somewhere in the, in the show, Chad Gable goes to Adam Pierce and requests a six-man tag next week with the Wyatt Six that interfered. And the Alpha Academy, himself and the Creed Brothers. Now, the funny thing is, Adam Pierce seems so less stunned every time these keep occurring. I think there's a going to be a reveal somewhere down the road where Adam Pierce is in cahoots with the Wyatt Six. And I think it's going to be revealed that he's in cahoots with them because of the chaos that became Monday Night Raw, that he has to try to corral everybody. And this is his, these are his instruments of destruction. These are his instruments of authority. I think we could see Adam Pierce. I don't think he's the sixth member or anything like that. I just think it might be revealed sooner than later that he is kind of directing the Wyatt Six. Because you got to admit, Adam Pierce eats a lot of shit every single week. The guy's either drink, having to take a drink or he's just in some kind of conundrum that the, the Raw superstars are just causing. It's havoc all the time. And what better way to control it than use these unbelievable, unbelievably incontrollable aspects of you know your roster that can just go out there and do your bidding. So I think that might be interesting. Or... They'll just keep the Wyatt Six as themselves, and they'll keep on moving on. But that was the good. The other good, Gunther, his promo in the empty arena. My God, this guy just gets it. He is getting better and better and better on the microphone and in the ring. This Donnie did proclaim, I remember, 
as of, I want to say, the Saudi pay-per-view. I don't remember which one, but it was the one where Seth won the world title last year, when the world title was introduced. Not the underling belt, the world heavyweight championship was introduced. He said on his, his review, Donnie said that, you know, Gunther is the future. He is the future. But guess what? The future is now. The future is Saturday. And that Ring Genalel is going to be your new world heavyweight champion. I don't want them to delay this. I do not want them to push this out. I want this now. This needs to happen. I like Damian Priest. Damian's done a great job. He's had a good little run, but they, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. See what I did there. So that was great. Go watch the promo for yourself. I can't do it justice, um, but he just basically says he resents how people use this great sport of, com of um, competitiveness and, and gladiators to Use it to live out your childhood fantasies, to live out your childhood traumas, to give you an outlet. He's like, I do not want that. I want the best of the best, and I will not apologize for being said best of the best. So it's just a great little you know, uh, precursor to what he's about to do at SummerSlam. I really do think if there's going to be a title change at SummerSlam, it is going to be the World Heavyweight Championship. The moment that Drew wasted the money in the bank. And I still stand by that. This match did not need the money in the bank to be wasted between Drew and Punk. The moment that was wasted, you've now taken the waiting in the wings of whoever's going to cash in on Damien. This is just going to be a straightforward, right to business, slobber knocker, as JR would say. And it's going to end with the best man. And it's going to be Gunther. Gunther's going to lead the charge into the next year into Netflix. I firmly believe so. You heard it here. I know a lot of you are probably thinking the same, but I am banking on it. Now, next, um, you know, there wasn't uh, – you had Sammy, so more good. Sammy's promo. Sammy's fired up. Sammy taking on Braun, going head first, saying, you know, you aren't going to take me down. Oh, the smart tank dog. Pause. Sorry for that brief pause, but the dog always has to get his way. So, yeah, you had Sammy basically saying, hey, I'm no longer the plucky underdog. He's been saying it for months. I'm no longer the guy who's happy to be here, happy to show the next generation, happy to lead the charge and groom the next level of superstars. He's like, nah. You guys want to take my spot, come knock me off the mountain, but do it to my face. Don't keep coming from at me from behind, where Braun has been doing for weeks. Braun has been trying to play mind games. Braun has underestimated Sammy. And at the end of the match, it was Jey Uso versus, I mean, sorry, it was Sammy Zayn versus, um, God, I apologize. It was Sammy Zayn versus Dominic Mysterio. And of course, the match got thrown out almost instantly because Dominic tried to take care of things and the judgment day come out to take care of business and hold handle handle it and so basically that brings out jay uso who clears the field evens up the score and then sammy's left with braun who tries to attack him from behind he hits him once knocks him down braun thinks he's gonna just run roughshod all over him he doesn't and braun ends up eating a exploder into the corner of the ring he went for the Huluva kick, but Braun gets out. He's like, hell no, I ain't taking that thing to the face. Rolls out. And then, interesting enough, Sammy's standing tall, but then a few moments later, Braun tries to come back in for part two and attacks him again, but he goes for the spear and eats a boot to the face. So it shows Sammy is just a fighting champ. And I got to admit, Sammy is a great champ. Sammy's been a really, really great intercontinental champion. It's a wonderful fit for him. I don't want to see it end, but at the same time, if you're going to elevate Braun, I don't think he can take two major losses in a row for the same title. So in addition to the new world heavyweight champion that I am crowning, already auspiciously crowning Gunther, I'm going to say I'm going to give the tip of the hat to Braun as well as your new intercontinental champion because I just don't see where it can progress if you have Braun lose again. Uh, 
They've already done the finish where Braun destroyed someone last week, which was the finish. I believe it was Ilya. They, um, they already did the finish with Ilya that they should have done with Sami Zayn where the match got thrown out because Braun was too violent. You can't do that again. It just would be too much, too repetitive. So I think Braun takes it. Um, that was in the good too. Now let's get to the bad. The bad. I don't care about Caden Chance and, and, and Katana. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I know. They're fun. It's this and that. I think Ilya needs to get... I mean, not Ilya. I think Lyra needs to get away from them. She, they're kind of running her down a little bit. They're, they're making Lyra too plucky. You know, I, I don't... This one, it just was kind of... I didn't care for it. I'm sorry. It was supposed to be to get the, um, you know, Sonya and her new crew over. And it was fine. Damage control comes out and makes the appearance at the end. That's the match everyone wants to see is damage control versus Sonya and the new crew. I'm good with it. Um, it's just... Yeah, I if there is a bad, it's that. And uh, then the other bad would be... I'm loving the feud with Rhea and Liv over the world the world women's title and Dom. However, not loving the promos from Liv. Um, I didn't like when she cried the other week. I thought that was weak. Uh, that was just lame. I think it's beneath her to cry. Um, and then I didn't like this week where they gave the fatal attraction style very jealous spurned lover burning photographs and i'm gonna complete my revenge tour and blah 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 and it's like you know it lives better than this she's much better in this and i, I didn't see it this week again ria though is killing it on promos ria is just so natural and she's great I'm going to surprise everyone here. I don't want Liv to lose the title at SummerSlam. I feel like this is the chapters of the story. I think this is the opening chapter. Um, well, no, let's call it the mid-chapter. It would be the second chapter because the first chapter would be WrestleMania after WrestleMania rematch, um, aftermath when, when Liv took her out, took Rhea out. So, but I think there's more meat on this bone. There's that phrase. I think there's more meat on this bone. And the only way that there's meat on the bone is if Rhea loses by hook or by crook at SummerSlam. Now, initially, I thought Dom would be the one to cost her. I don't foresee that anymore. I do think we're going to get Finn and Liv as a unit. And I think something was telling at the end of, uh, towards the end of Raw, when Finn was um, backstage saying, no, I got to go out al alone tonight. I got to prove it. I got to show it unless you think I'm not good enough. And they're like, no, no, brother. We're just worried about Gunther coming in and making sure that something's going to happen and we don't want that to. And he's like, no, 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 I got this. I do think you're going to get Finn as the mastermind with Liv, that they've been trying to plan this the whole time because Finn's going to be tired of being held down. And Gunther made allusion to that in his promo that he said, the great Finn Balor, somebody I used to look up to, somebody that I revered, is now reduced to being a laughing stock because you hang around street trash. He goes, I want to see what is left of the great Finn Balor in my eyes. And that's going to be interesting because I think the Judgment Day, the way they're going, I really do, even despite Dom. I think they're starting to head face. I think Damian Priest is gonna, is going to be a face. I think Rhea is already a face, and I think by association you'll have Dom start maybe turning face. I think Finn's going to be out of the group. I think he's just you know no longer part of the focus, and I think he serves as the vehicle to propel the Finn. I mean the Live and Rhea uh, story further. I think. If you turn Dom now, it will be stupid. It won't work. The other thing you could go, I think, would feel flat too, is you could turn Rhea on Dom. 
and be like, you know, you little twit, did you think I was just going to come back and forgive you that this was just going to be okay? I just destroyed your little girlfriend and now I don't need you. You could do that and that would be all right. But I think it would work better if you have Finn turning on the group with Rhea. I mean, I'm sorry, with Liv to disassemble it and cause dissension from the inside and just kind of be like, hey, I'm beyond you guys. I'm a former universal champion. I'm a multi-tag team champion. I'm the workhorse of our group. What has Dom done? What has anyone done? And I think it will work if he kicks everyone to the curb, especially with Liv. I think it will be, you know, a great little story, a great little gimmick. I think it works because you had Damien come down for the save at the end of Raw with Gunther and Finn. And I think it's going to be one of those things where Finn's just like, okay, I don't need anybody to protect my back. I'm not the little kid brother here. I'm not the sidekick. I'm my own man. And I think you're going to get a twofold thing. I think you're going to get the catalyst to cost um, Damien the title will be, um, I'm sorry, will be Finn Balor. Finn Balor will cost Damien Priest the title this Saturday. That's how Gunther takes it. And then later on in the night, or whichever one happens, well, it, I think later on in the night, you'll get Finn aligning with Liv to stop Rhea. Now you've stopped judge, Judgment Day's aspirations of both world championships in one stroke. So that was also part of the good, and I apologize. That part's part of the good. Liv crying is really bad. And as far as the mid goes... As far as the mid goes, I, other than, there really was none. This this show, and I apologize, it's tough to remember everything, and I'd like to get these out fresh as possible. I'll get a little more, more organized as we go along, but hey, as Donnie says, this is unplugged and uncensored as always. Um, as far as Raw this week, I will give it a 7. I'll give it a 7, a strong 7. The good wasn't so good that I'm like, oh, God, this is a, you know, a nine. This propels it and everything else can fall flat. It was good enough. Was it a good lead-in show to SummerSlam? Sure. It was serviceable. It, was, it had some fun spots. I think SummerSlam is going to be very good. I mean, Punk and Drew will have to flop so horribly for it to be a complete disaster. And I think there's a lot of, again, a lot of potential I didn't use the phrase again. I think there's a lot of potential for Saturday that a lot of people are going to be happier than when they finished Money in the Bank. That's all for me. That's the Raw Rebuttal. Let me know what you thought of the show, and I will gladly answer you below. But thank you for your time, and see you on the next one.